Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're gonna continue the trend of backups. So today we're gonna take a look at tape backups. So let's dive right into it. So before we give, get, understand any technology, first thing we have to understand why there is a specific need. So what do we needed from a backup system is long term storage. Basically, even if let's say you have a lot of money and you let's say backed up all your data on a hard drive and you disconnected the hard drive and kept it in a shelf like, you know, I'm going to uh, recall that seven, ten years from now, it's not going to work because the lubrication would have either dried up or uh, would have seeped out. So flat out, it needs to continuously run, not continuously as in 24 into the, but like, you know, every few weeks you have to continuously run it. So it's not like uh, backup and forget like CDs. And it has to be offline. The backup that uh, we want is offline. It must be offline as in uh, you don't, you're not supposed to be connected to network, uh, either your office network, either your uh, cloud server network or basically you have to have a way that it can be completely disconnected from the grid or from the net for safety reasons. And it should also require no power. Basically, it's something that you only uh, turn on once in a while and then you're like, forget about it. It's not like, you know, you have to spend continuous uh, kilowatts of hour, like uh, network stash storage takes a lot of energy to run. So you want this to be like, okay, I'm gonna back it up every week. So during that week, you don't need to do anything about it. Let's say you work five days a week and then on the fifth day, on the night you put it there, you backed it up. So during the whole week, it should not take any power. And this is the final part. It should be cheap per dollar, uh, as in per gigabyte. How much cents, as in how much rupees or paisa, or whatever your currency is, how much you are spending per gigabyte. This is the final thing. And it must be compact. So we have this sort of solution. We used to use uh, magnetic tapes as the primary uh, storage medium for computers. Hey, Hydra. And as you, many of you know, we already are very familiar with tapes. Uh, this used to be the mp3 player of the old days so these are our needs how do we met it is like we created a standard known as digital linear tape basically it's a same magnetic tape but specifically formulated so it can handle data much more reliably basically all the skills that we learned by making uh, multiple types of tapes we put into this it's like you know everything uh, from the good the bad we learned and then we put into one system and that system is now called lto basically linear tape open it comes into cartridges like that and it has only one spool if you remember cassettes or vcr uh, like VHS tapes, it has two spools. So basically what they are doing is giving you one spool and the second spool would be in your drive, basically something like that. That will have the second spool. So if you see them and it has only one uh, rotating point, it's only there because uh, it only needs to unspool it. That's why it, uh, it says a uh, linear tape open. That is the open aspect of it as in the second spool is outside the tape. And it has very expensive drive. The drives, because of that nature, because of the fact that it needs to create a structure where it can wound the tape, it's ludicrously expensive. The drives itself uh, can cost you more than like uh, $5,000 to $50,000. So tapes are very cheap on the other hand. Tapes itself is much cheaper than any hard drive. And let's say you backed up your data from, uh, onto tapes and then you forgot about it, let's say for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, they will still retain that data. That's the crucial aspect of it. This is perfect for archiving things. And many tapes also come with what's called worm protection. Basically, it's a write only once, read as many times as you need to. And we also started to create what's called tape library. Basically, where because the, these tapes are standardized, as in the size will remain the same, you can uh, properly store them as we used to store with cassette tapes. So what are the pros of this aspect? Why people would, a small business or large corporation would want to employ these sort of cartridges? First, it's imports, impossible to do a data breach on that. Imagine it this way. You have a cloud server and uh, you have a lot of data in your cloud backed up. What if uh, somebody does what's called denial of service, basically DDoS attack? You are screwed. Basically, if DDoS attack happens, your network will be overwhelmed. You can't access your data. On tapes, it can't be done. You can simply have the tape and uh, run it in your local drive. Done. And not to mention, many companies have such a proprietary information, they rather lose the data rather than like you know risk it being leaked. So what they do is like they work 
they do all their work they let's say for one month they did all their work they archived it in tapes and then they deleted it from their server so even if somebody hacks it they cannot access the data it is very crucial in some scenarios where you have mission critical data basically there won't be a digital footprint data will be still safely kept in those sort of thing but even if somebody hacks your server it won't be compromised so the because of the fact that it is physically disconnected as in the ca cassette can be taken out the cartridge can be taken out and you can be like okay uh, let's say i make five six cartridge backup and you know each of my uh, executive have one cartridge and they went home so that way you know for a fact uh, at least one cartridge will survive no matter what happens and you can delete the data no hacker no matter how good can access that data and uh, many of these tapes support hardware level encryption so even if they steal the tape itself physically they can't run it if they don't have the matching encryption key and this is the best off-site backup now many of you know let's say you have a building you have a big server rack you have a lot of people working there uh, fire does happen so that's why we need something known as off-site backup basically your data is should be backed up but it should be somewhere else because it's very unlikely that you will have one catastrophe uh, attacking two places even in the case of earthquake let's say you are in the same town it's unlikely both building will be destroyed uh, you know 200 percent some may survive for that reason we always love off-site backup basically you work you have a running backup which is continuously doing the backup but if in case of earthquake in case of a hurricane or in case of a physical damages in fire you will have off-site backup this allows to do that because each of those tape can store a lot amount of lot amount of data and you have to understand this format that you see here it's very old as in older than cd and is still going this is a very well supported format and the in you know, the structure of it is open source that's why there are so many manufacturers making it as in this image that i'm showing is from ibm dell also makes it hp also makes it so there are many many companies that make this sort of thing so it's not going out of fashion or like you know it's gonna be unsupported and to give you an idea how solid the system is this is the structure of uh, how they upgraded the system and every time a new lot structure is introduced like this is a current latest lot 8 structure and it can support upwards of 12 terabyte here's the any device that can read that must also support one read and write on one step below and read only to two step below basically if you have generation 7 reader the drive it will successfully able to use generation 6 ca uh, cassette in a read and write and generation 5 only read so you can directly migrate your data from generation 5 all the systems that are uh, getting certified with the, this uh, lto structure they always have to follow this so even if let's say uh, you didn't care about your data systems and you just you were just backing a lot of data up in let's say uh, lot 6 uh, LTO 6 and uh, you forgot about it and then you are like okay let's not waste money into jumping into lot 7 directly jump into lot 8 because lot 8 will support up to 32 terabyte you're like okay now your only thing you can't do is you can't write on your old tapes you can read the data from it but you can't write on them so you can directly migrate your data so suffice to say this is a very well supported standard and it's been going on for long enough that every aspect of it is thoroughly covered how you gonna recover your data how you gonna make sure the data is mine and imagine having millions of cassettes how you gonna handle it we have what's called a robotic tape library basically in server form factor you can buy robotic tape libraries where you don't even have to touch it like there will be barcode on cassette edge there will be a barcode there and robot will read the barcode pull it pull the cassette out write the data put it back there and it will store that memory okay this slot has this cassette this cassette has this much data used up so that's why we have a lot of uh, robotic system and each uh, robotic system can support upwards of petabytes and petabytes and petabytes and petabytes and petabytes of data like these are so capable that they store upwards of uh, entire google database can be stored on them and yes google does store a lot of database in that because in case of uh, let's say you need to recall very old data as in like eight nine years old data uh, hard drive would be dead from that point and if you had stored that kind of data on your active system you would have been compromising a lot of space in your active system which you don't want to do so archive storage is very good for that sort of thing so and imagine a company like IBM, imagine a company like Dell, how much data they must archive. For that reason, this whole structure has been thoroughly tested. Like from as early as lot 4 and lot 3, there were 
talks of standardizing the robotic system now there is a whole standard system that you can just buy and forget about it auto loaders are also there robotic there is there so basically this is thoroughly tested this is enterprise grade if you are running a small business there is no better backup system than this that there must be some cons to this yes obviously first is ludicrously slow read and write so if you assume like it has let's say six terabyte capacity yeah it's not gonna give you six terabyte um, you know even gigabytes per second it's a uh, it's slower than cds so read and write speed is not jaw dropping proportional to speed is getting better but it's not holy crap it's so fast it's very slow and not to mention it has no random access basically as you can see in this mechanism it has to open the tape from here then wound the tape here so during that time if the data is let's say on the last 80 percent of the tape you have to wait until that whole 80 percent is wound up so there is no random access in cd you can have random access simply because a the whole disk is spinning and second the lens can move back and forth reading the tracks you can't do something like that in this there is no random access and it has a very short lifespan as in let's say you write that data on the cassette and you let's say rewrite it rewrite it 15 16 times 600 basically they can only do it three to four hundred times they will die after that so they are only rated to 300 uh, complete cycles as in the once the tape has been unwounded then wound it back that is one cycle they can only do that for 300 times so don't expect this like let's say you had a cassette backup and you're like okay i'm just gonna rewrite on one cassette don't do that it can only support few hundred times so ideally you want to be below 50 for maximum accuracy and 150 like you should consider getting a new cassette for that reason why people invest in libraries because they really don't want to you know keep uh, running the cassettes because they will either the tape will break or the data will get compromised for that reason it has a very short lifespan and it's only suited for archive it is not something that you can be like you know hey i'm gonna store my all my 4k movies in this cassette and then you know plug it in my system and then watch 4k movies yeah it's not suited for that sort of application cds are better for that optical media on which i have made a video about that yesterday it means like last week's episode so these are the cons of the system so i hope you liked my episode on this matter and you liked it learned it learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it dislike it and i would say leave a comment what one are you what would you want to see in the next episode of computer wednesday and as always thanks for watching